Green marketing, also known as environmental marketing or ecological marketing, is the promotional strategy of products that are labeled as environmentally safe and sustainable, as well as of companies that promote the environment seeking to reduce their carbon footprint. In either case, green marketing involves more than simply presenting an environmentally friendly product, as it also promotes a company's processes and business practices as having low environmental impacts. Green marketing has its roots in the changing consumer attitudes towards a brand, as these changes are influenced by a firm's policies and practices that affect the quality of the environment and reflect the level of its concern for the community. Green, environmental and eco-marketing are part of the new marketing approaches which do not just refocus, adjust or enhance existing marketing thinking and practice, but seek to challenge those approaches and provide a substantially different perspective. In more detail, green, environmental and eco-marketing belong to the group of approaches which seek to address the lack of fit between marketing as it is currently practiced and the ecological and social realities of the wider marketing environment. Its origins. The green marketing strategy came into prominence during the late 1980s and the early 1990s, especially when the World Commission on Environment and Development prepared a report defining sustainable development as meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs, and has gone down into the history as the Brundtland Report, which marked an important step towards widespread thinking on sustainability in everyday activity. The growth of marketing activities, from mass production with the use of advanced technology, characterized by severe competition and use of unhealthy marketing tactics and techniques to attract customers, exaggeration in advertising and mass distribution of products has brought about concerns on the over-exploitation of resources and on sustainable reuse of products and services, and so becoming an integral part of the marketing thought. The holistic nature of green also suggests that the economic supply should be balanced by environmental care and respect of the natural resources. Green marketing continues to gain adherence, particularly in light of growing global concern about climate change and the over-exploitation of natural resources. This concern has led more companies to advertise their commitment to reduce their climate impacts and the effect this is having on their products and services. Consultant and author Jacqueline Ottman summarizes the green marketing strategy under five rules to be followed. One, make the consumers be aware of and concerned about the environmental issues that a product addresses. Two, make the consumers feel that by using your product they will make a difference. Three, make the consumers believe your claims. Four, make consumers believe your product will also work as well as non-green alternatives. And five, make consumers afford any premiums. There are multiple reasons for an organization to go green and therefore to adopt green marketing strategies like a growing social responsibility, which means that companies realize that they must both achieve environmental objectives as well as profit-related objectives, new opportunities, as people become more and more concerned about the environment and adopting green marketing into their corporate strategy can bring them sustainable competitive advantages over the companies who are marketing non-environmental responsible alternatives, as well as cost-profit issues or even governmental pressure over new restrictive laws on the protection of the planet. Environmental sustainability can be defined as a state in which the demands placed on the environment can be met without reducing its capacity to allow all people to live well now and in the future. Environmental sustainability deals with how natural systems function, remain diverse, and produce everything it needs for the ecology to remain in balance. It also acknowledges that human civilization takes resources to sustain our modern way of life. Sustainability takes into account how we might live in harmony with the natural world around us, protecting it from damage and destruction. We now live in a modern, consumerist and largely urban existence throughout the developed world, and we consume a lot of natural resources every day. 
In our urban centers, we consume more power than those who live in rural settings. But sustainable living should not only focus on people who live in urban centers, though. There are improvements to be made everywhere. Sustainability focuses on balancing that fine line between competing needs, our need to move forward technologically and economically, and the needs to protect the environment in which we and others live. So it's not just about the environment, but also about our health as a society and ensuring that no people or areas of life suffer as a result of environmental legislation. And it's also about examining the longer term effects. As resources are limited and human wants are unlimited, it is important for the marketers to utilize the resources efficiently without waste as well as to achieve an organization's objective. So green marketing is inevitable. There is growing interest among the consumers all over the world regarding protection of environment. Worldwide evidence indicates that people are concerned about environmental issues and are changing their behavior. As a result of this, green marketing has emerged which speaks for growing market for sustainable and socially responsible products and services. Unfortunately, the green marketing sector suffers from the deceptive misuse of promotion of green products and services, organizations or policies that are in fact not green at all. This phenomenon has been labeled as greenwashing already in 1986 when it was stated that within the hotel industry the common practice of placing placards in each room promoting the reuse of towels ostensibly to save the environment was not actually a way of reducing water use as little or no effort toward reducing energy waste was being made by these institutions. As a matter of fact, the green campaign they were undergoing was actually aimed at increasing profits with no tangible outcome on the environment. This practice is unfortunately at times still in use nowadays, especially in the advertising industry by the use of green environment-related images or claims on the use of recycled processes and products. Legislations have been created in many countries to tackle this phenomenon, also because such a practice harms real green companies and organizations. According to professors Ginsberg and Bloom, companies can choose to adopt different strategies in relation to green marketing and green production activities. Lean green, defensive green, shaded green, and extreme green. See the figure below. And this depends on how the company answers questions like, how substantial is the green consumer segment for the company? Or, can the brand or company be differentiated on the green dimension? Companies using a lean green strategy try to be good corporate citizens, but they're not focused on publicizing or marketing their green initiatives. Instead, these companies try to reduce costs and improve efficiencies through environmentally friendly activities, thereby creating a lower cost competitive advantage, not a green one. These companies want to follow the rules and regulations, but do not expect to see substantial money to be made from the green market segments. When a defensive green is used as a marketing strategy, companies recognize that green market segments are important and profitable constituencies that they cannot afford to separate from. Therefore, they use defensive green strategy in order to enhance brand image and ease the damage. On the other hand, by using this strategy, companies cannot differentiate themselves from competitors on the basis of greenness in accordance with that, efforts to promote and publicize companies' environmental initiatives are irregular and minimized, despite those initiatives being truthful sometimes. Shaded green companies focus on having long-term, system-wide, environmentally friendly processes that require both significant financial and non-financial commitment. These companies usually have the power and the capability to differentiate themselves on greenness but instead they choose to profit from highlighting other attributes. These attributes are usually the direct tangible benefits provided to the customers. Shaded green companies usually sell their products through mainstream channels, where the environmental benefits are promoted only as a secondary factor. Eventually, in companies using extreme green as marketing strategy, environmental issues and responsibility are fully incorporated into the business and product life cycle processes. Their practices include life cycle pricing approaches, 
total quality environmental management, and the manufacturing of the environment. Companies that use Extreme Green as a marketing strategy mostly serve niche markets and sell their products through special channels. As in other marketing strategies, also green marketing has its roots in the so-called marketing mix concept, based on the already mentioned four P's – promotion, product, price and place which can also be greened according to a specific strategy. Promotion. It's fundamental to carefully define the promotional message and not to use greenwashing promotion techniques. So, communication with the market should put stress on environmental aspects, for instance, the possession of an ISO 14000 certification, it is to say a certification on standards related to environmental management, or the use for, of recycled material, for instance, and so on. Um, the expenditures on environmental protection should be advertised and sales promotion campaign may come in handy. Product. It's important to identify customers' environmental concerns and adjust the products in order to address those needs and to develop green products to grant the company a competitive advantage. Recycling and reusing are the leading factors in green production. A producer should offer ecological products which not only must not contaminate the environment, but should protect it and even liquidate existing environmental damages. Price Prices for green products may be a bit higher than conventional products, and most customers are only willing to pay higher prices if they perceive green products to have an extra value. Such extra value can be in the form of improved performance, function, design, visual appeal or taste, but the product needs to be or to perform just as good as or even better than a conventional product. Place Marketing local or seasonal products, for instance vegetables, fruits, meats, but also cars, accessories, clothes, and so on, from local production is more easy to be marketed as green than imported products. Also, the choice of more environmentally friendly distribution channels and or green vehicles is an asset. A significant way urban centers, especially large cities, are increasing their marketable image, especially in an environmentally sustainable way, is through the car sharing service. Many cities in the world have already implemented this service in cooperation with car manufacturers as well as with car rental operators in order to provide a high quality service alternative to public transportation, to reduce the amount of vehicles on the streets and therefore decrease the amount of carbon dioxide CO2, and other polluting gases in the air and so spreading out the image of a green environmentally aware city. An example is the car sharing service provided for by the Agency for Mobility of Rome, Roma Servizi per la Mobilità, in association with the Civic Administration, who have recently developed the service for sustainable mobility. Following a yearly registration by means of the booking procedure, users can drive where they wish without the costs and charges of owning and running a car. Users can therefore collectively access a car fleet spread around the city through so-called car parks, a single car is made available to multiple users who have registered with the service. Vehicles can be used 24 hours a day or night, 365 days over the year as long as the registered user books the car ahead, minimum time 15 minutes, and uses it for a minimum time of 1 hour up to maximum time of 72 hours. The service offers also the possibility to use cars in other towns and cities belonging to the circuit with the same subscription. This innovative service highlights the low costs for transport, as one pays for the car only when he or she uses it, and the benefits for the city and the environment as a whole. The Roman administration sponsor and financial support to this initiative also aimed at marketing the city as green-oriented and aware of the need for sustainable living and transport, as this application can greatly reduce carbon emissions and improve city environments. Many other cities have implemented this kind of service, 
thus conveying an image of sustainability and environmental awareness. For instance, Respiro in Madrid, or Autolib in Paris, or Zipcar in London, and many more.